Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And in this conversation, we'll be discussing uh, Kundalini Joy and Kundalini Pain. Uh, before we begin to do that, though, I would like to to thank Centara for for her help and and, and her family for being sponsors of this program here on Block Talk Radio and allowing these these levels of information to be given into the general population. So so thank you, Santara. You're very welcome, Chrism. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like everything is good. So we'll, we will go ahead and begin uh, after I let you know that there are other areas on the Internet where we can... Re- this this information can be received and uh the first the website that I'd like to give out is Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com and that's the number one dot com. And then you there are various communities. Um uh, one is on Yahoo, Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups dot com. And then on Facebook we have uh a few com- uh, communities there. Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Facebook groups, and then uh, Kundalini Exclamation Point, uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point on Facebook as well. And that's a public group, so you should be able to just uh, do a search on Kundalini Awakening and you'll see it come up there. And so these are other areas where where this information uh, is being given. Also, if you go to my uh, Facebook page, Kundalini on Facebook. Uh, just read the page, and then some of this information is being given there as well. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and begin this conversation, and I'd like to thank you for joining it with me, and I would like to thank those in the who are visiting in the archives. Uh, thank you for visiting the archives and, uh, and uh, partaking of this, this information. Kundalini joy is an amazing level of joy. Um, it's a joy that, uh, like many things, Kundalini uh, words fail to describe the level of joy that the Kundalini can bring a person. It is so amazingly beautiful, so amazingly profound and life-changing, and, and and it just goes on for days and days and days, uh, just walking around in ecstasy, walking around with bliss, uh, is so, <laughs> it is such an amazing experience that I, I really, uh, I really hope those of you hearing this can begin to, to walk a path that will have that level of joy come into your life. I would love for each person on this world to be able to experience that level of joy at least one time in their life. It is so profound. Um, It is so profound that when it goes away, a great void can be left in a person's life. A, a great level of emptiness. All of a sudden, this this incredibly huge surge of divine energy comes into a person and stays for a while, and then and then it it, it would it leaves because it has to leave. If if if, if bliss or ecstasy or, or kundalini joy stays permanently within a person, uh, unless that person has a predisposition for being able to handle that energy, the energy itself can start doing some damage because it is so strong. So as the energy, uh, you know, fades fades off slowly, this great void can happen in a person, and this can be interpreted as pain, uh, a heartbreak kind of a pain, like, oh, my God, what did I do to make the kundalini angry at me? Why does it... Why has it left me? And, of course, you know, you haven't done anything to make it angry with you. It's, it's only left you because, you know, it's, 
it's not something that the body in an unprepared uh, format can have for long, long, long periods of time. Uh, you have to start working on your karma. You have to start working on your attitudes. You have to start working a practice. And, and this is me speaking. This is me speaking. This is my experience speaking. This is, this is the Kundalini in me speaking. Um, not everybody agrees with how I teach things. And I just want you to know that. I want you to know that there are very, very, very many other teachers out there. They have their own ways of teaching things. And, you know, and that's great. That's great for them. I'm trying not to sound overly absolutist in what I'm saying. And, and, and so this it's important for you to understand that, yes, Kristen says this, but you may have a teacher that says, oh, no, he's absolutely wrong. It's not like that. It's like this. And so, so you know, I will suggest that you pay attention to the teacher that, that, that you are working with right now rather than, uh, you know, listening to, to me on, on the Internet here and, and uh, you know, maybe getting yourself in trouble with that teacher. So Kundalini uh, will come and it will show you its glory often, not always, but often. It will show you its glory in in, in a in a way that allows you to feel levels of love that are that are exponential in their in their expression within you levels of connectedness levels of grace levels of beauty levels of joy and then as it leaves um that void that is created can bring in levels of pain or heartbreak uh, uh, uh a memory that is burned into the soul of the person like well you've experienced how it can be and and this can drive you to go further into the process to to really work and it's great it's it's a great system you know, um, you know, let the person see how wonderful and glorious it can be and then back that off and let the memory of that experience become the engine to drive them in their practice or to drive them in a way that, that allows them to work through their karmas, uh, to do their forgivenesses, to do their, you know, the, the practices that they need to do uh, to allow them to come back in to that divine grace, so it's, it, it is. I, I think it's a great system, and uh, and I, you know, I just I'm trying to put it in a way here so that you can kind of understand what is happening uh, when this occurs for you. Now, Kundalini joy comes in, in many many different forms. Um, the ecstatic joy is kind of what I just described. The bliss is kind of a maybe a step down version of the ecstatic joy, but it also comes in just when you're just going through your day and and all of a sudden a grass blade catches your eye and you see this amazing level of beautiful colors of green and and maybe there's a dewdrop on the gla on the grass blade and and all of a sudden you're in joy again all of a sudden you're in, in this like a uh a gentle level of bliss, and it's just these things can stay with you, and it, they're not as powerful as the other forms of joy that will come. They're powerful enough to get your attention, and yet they they can stay with you longer. They can stay with you longer, and so as you go through your day and you see a loving action being being uh, being done in front of you, and your tears of joy will come. Really, really let those tears of joy come. Uh, those tears, as I've mentioned in other, in other uh, broadcasts, are release valves for for the kundalini uh, for the kundalini joy in this case to bleed through your system so that you don't you don't get it uh, say too strong in one area. The body has natural systems of release uh, of, of kundalini energetic pressures within itself. The tears being one, the the uh the kriyas being another the the vocalizations being another uh the dreams being another the 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 roving levels of temperature of the body those are also expressions of of energetic uh release that the kundalini has naturally within the human body you need to understand that that there is an energetic anatomy 
to the human system that is just for the kundalini. Just for the kundalini. Okay, and this this is on top of all the other systems of the body, the uh, endocrine system, the skeletal system, the uh, circulatory system, all of these different systems. Well, we have the kundalini uh, uh, system within the body, and, and these are where many of these uh, pressure releases will occur, pressure releases that, that typically come with joy. Uh, on the painful side, of the equation. Well, most of us, not all of us, but most of us will come into the kundalini with certain levels of blockage that the initial joyful sweep will just kind of sidetrack to some point. I mean, instead of going over it, it'll it'll just kind of go around it so that you can kind of get the feel of the of the joy at first. And what I mean at first is you've been doing some sort of a practice that even allows you to recognize that you're in a kundalini type of equation. And as you do that practice, you reach a certain point within that practice when the uh, when the the joy becomes apparent to you, the, the grace becomes apparent to you, uh, the tears come and all of this. However, uh, sometimes... You know, it, these blockages are felt right off the bat, and these can be experienced as pain. Pain uh, uh, in the lower backs, for instance. So we'll just look at the first chakra. The first chakra, as it begins to to open to the kundalini within a person, you have to realize that the tailbone uh, and the pelvic girdle are kind of that protective membrane that keeps the kundalini in its dormant state from, you know, flowing up the spine uh, unless there's an accident or something like that or a person does a practice. Uh, so as that kundalini begins to awaken or is activated in the lower spine and the tailbone, uh, pressures, of expansive expansion pressures can be felt within those areas, and these expansion pressures can hurt. It feels like you've got a sore lower back. Uh, it feels like you, you know, you've been overworking that lower spine uh, in some dreadful way, and and it may it may drive you to the point where you're going to go to the MD and you say, "Oh, doc, I've got this terrible lower back pain." And and in the United States right now and the Western countries, you know, there's so many different causes of pain. You've got phantom pain. You've got, uh, you know, direct pressure pain. You've got the twisting pain. You know, so they're not quite able to just put their finger on it exactly, although, you know, many in the medical profession will pretend to to know all about your pain. And they'll uh, they'll just kind of try to get across to you that, you know, oh, yes, I know about your pain, Mr. Person, and uh, you just sit here and wait on this little piece of paper here, and uh, I'll be back in a second. And he'll go back and check his books and see what he can come up with as far as a diagnosis. However, with Kundalini, it will mimic many, many, many different kinds of pain. And so the, 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 the DX or the diagnosis typically won't be correct. Oh, you know, you... You've somehow strained your lower back and bending over or picking up something or getting dressed, putting your shoes on, whatever. And so here, take this Advil and, and call me in a couple months. Whereas it's not gonna it's not gonna help your Kundalini. You're still gonna have that lower back. Um if you're doing things that in your daily life that also in addition to the Kundalini beginning its expansion in your lower back, uh provide other uh, avenues of pain to be felt, well, then that will be kind of stacked upon it. So you can kind of see that that these levels of pain can can increase. Now, as you let's say the person is lucky and they begin to understand, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm having uh, beginnings of a kundalini activation. As that occurs, well, then, that changes the whole scenario and the person can be begin to do certain practices that will begin to to pull up uh, levels of energy from from the tailbone through the pelvic girdle into the second chakra, and uh, these would be exercises that are similar to yoga, 
and I'll, and I'll just use the ubiquitous hatha yoga, and there's many, many different levels of hatha yoga that can do this. Make sure that you devote equal uh, amounts of time if you're going to a side-to-side move. So if, if, if uh, you know, these gentle spinal twists, you're lying on your back and you just kind of bring your hips over to one side with your shoulders still to the, to the mat, well, make sure that you're equal in the amount of time that, that uh, you're, you're, you're giving that yoga position to work for you. So equal amounts to the right side, equal amounts to the left side. Uh, the five Tibetans will also do this. And uh, just remember that when you're doing the five Tibetans, that you start out with about six. You don't start out with 21. 21 is the end product. Okay, that's what you do after, uh, uh, you know, a month or two. And then you're able to get up to 21 and you do them just fine. Um, I get a lot of uh, comments from people with the five Tibetans that it hurts their wrists. And I can totally understand that because it was kind of hurting my wrists a little bit too. But if you make a fist and you, you basically uh, go through some of the positions like the fourth Tibetan and the fifth Tibetan where normally you would be, you know, you'd have kind of a, a, a tight flex in the wrist, uh, make a fist with it and that can help you not stress, you know, or, or strain any kind of a carpal tunnel syndrome that you might have going there. And a, and a lot of us do. A lot of us are in these, these employee, employments where carpal tunnel syndrome exists. So have a, you know, have a look at the uh, videos that I have on YouTube. The video channel is Chrisum and the number zero Kundalini. So it looks like Chrisum O Kundalini on YouTube. And it looks like I think the, um, if you go to the first page, You'll see a couple of examples of of, of, uh, of, of Chrisum uh, demonstrating the five Tibetans. If you have any questions about that, feel free to uh, email me directly at uh, k f i r e f o r a l l at yahoo dot com. Um, oh, and that reminds me, uh, Santara, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Chrisum. Could you could you make a, any kind of an announcement that I forgot to let you make at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. You may be referring to the re- to the retreat. <laughs> okay. Well, just to let everybody know that there's going to be a Kundalini retreat at Santa Rosa in California, and this is going to be a two day retreat, and um, led by Chrism, and um, it is happening on Saturday, April the twentieth beginning at 9.30 a.m., and it will run right through the day until 9.30 p.m., which is 12 hours, but in that time, we will um, share a wonderful day together, and we will eat meals together as well. And then on Sunday, April the 21st, we begin at 9, and we finish at 5. And the cost of the seminar of the retreat is $200. And if you would like more information, you can phone you can phone Eileen on 239-246-5608, or you can write to me at kundalini matters at gmail dot com. So. Um, On this retreat, the overall emphasis is going to be on helping each person to find his or her own unique path into the grace that is our Kundalini awakening journey, and it promises to be a wonderful two days. So I do hope that many of you will be able to join us. That's it, Chrisom. Thank you, Santara. Thank you for that. Sorry about that. uh, No worries. (laughs) Anyway, so as you do the five Tibetans, and, uh, uh, you know, you will... You'll find different ways uh, to really begin to to allow that kundalini to come up through the pelvic girdle in a way that that allows the body to get used to it slowly. Uh, I know a lot of people are very, very, very much in a hurry. I want it now, Daddy. I want it now. And and fortunately, sacred father. Uh, kind of knows you a little bit better than you know you and is, isn't so encumbered by your ego, that it allows you to go at the speed that you need to go at, not the speed that you necessarily want to go at. Okay. Uh, 
I understand that the pain is a problem sometimes. I do. I get it. I get it. And I had pain too. Uh, but you need to trust the process. You know what the process is. You see, you're already ahead of the game. You know what the process is. You know that, okay, I'm in a kundalini process. Now, the MDs may say, well, you've hyper-strained this, you've hyper-strained that, or, you know, you, you, you torqued here and you should have torqued there because now you've, you've retorked the previous torque position and so now you're just really torqued. Um, it's not going to help you. And then what they're going to do is they're going to give you drugs to basically hide uh, the symptom, um, you know, and, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's hard to go to work sometimes and experience pain, uh, you know, that is phantom in its nature. And so we are so trained in the West to pop that pill and uh, disguise that pain that, uh, you know, we tend to rely on that. And, and in many cases, we over rely on that. So with that in mind, I'm going to suggest that you open the channels to let the pressure off the pain in those certain areas. And by doing those five Tibetans or practicing the yoga, uh, doing uh, some pranayama, you're opening up those channels. Basically following the safety protocols is what I recommend. And I know, I know the safety protocols are not the cure for all things kundalini. I get it. I get it. I had a conversation with a, a gentleman today. He says, you know, I, I've tried the safeties, and they just don't work for me at all. I get it. I get it. You know, and it's it's true. It is, you know, you know, with this whole absolutist idea, the safeties will not cure everything kundalini. Okay? But it is the best and the safest uh, program uh that I know to teach uh, with regards to the kundalini. It doesn't involve entities. It doesn't involve, uh, you know, somebody, you know, getting into your space and starting to control your energy or your, you know, your body or your, you know, anything that has to do with your personal space. It doesn't allow that. The safeties are basically a practice that allows you to retain the integrity of your own process without having some person come in and start diddling around with your system, which most of them don't even know about in the first place. They just, you know, they just, well, here, I'll send my healing guide in there or whatever it is, right? They'll send the healing guide in, and you don't know who that healing guide is. And in many cases, the, the person that you're calling, they don't know who the healing guide is either. The healing guide says, well, I'm... uh I'm the goddess of love. And it's like, oh, okay, I believe that. So <laughs> so you want to be aware that uh, the safeties are a good practice to do because it allows you to have access to your own energetic system within your own levels of responsibility with the kundalini that's coming up in you. And let's face it. I can tell you all kinds of different things to do, and yet it's your responsibility to do it. It's your responsibility to listen. It's your responsibility to discern that this is good for you. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you that, that everything I say is absolutely perfect for you. You have to remember that I'm talking to a lot of people here, and so I have to give broad strokes of the brush rather than, than uh, you know, little micro, micro strokes of the brush here. And so, yeah, I could talk to you in person and, or, you know, on a Skype or something like that, and I could say, oh, okay, here's, this is what I'm seeing within your particular system. But here right now, I'm going to suggest that, that, the, that you do the safety protocols, that you don't allow a, you know, a shaman or, a, you know, anybody that's at least, you know, that is trying to jump over uh, your personal responsibilities with regards to, say, getting rid of a blockage. And that includes entities. Entities are great. Oh, I can get rid of that blockage for you, kind sir. 
and I will do that, and, and, and you know, no charge, and and you know, you'll you'll just be so much better. You know, sometimes they will do that, but now they've addicted you to their services, shall we say, and their services do not come without a price. Entity interactions almost always end up bad for the flesh person that's engaged in them. Okay. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could go into some stories with that, but I've already done that in other conversations. And so with regard to these blockages that will cause you pain, um, there are different things that you can do. Most of, most of these blockages will have an emotional component. Go in to the pain and just kind of see what resonates with you emotionally. Uh, is it anger? Is it fear? Is it revenge? Is it... Uh, victimization, I mean, what kind of emotion is attached to this blockage? And then begin to reverse that blockage by recognizing the emotion and forgiving whatever it is that caused the emotion. Even if you don't know what caused the emotion, you can give forgiveness into that equation, and that will begin to back off the, the emotional pressure that may be part of that blockage. Typically, the blockages aren't just one thing or another. They're a whole uh, compression of different things. So you'll have, a, uh, you'll have an emotional uh, situation there. You'll have a mental situation. You'll have a physical situation or a psychological, fear-based, ego-based situation. And, you know, this will, this will comprise the not of the blockage. And so you need to go into those areas. Remember, you have the five uh, areas of human expression, and that's the physical body, mental body, emotional body, psychological body, and the spiritual body. Go into those five areas and see what it is that, that the kundalini will bring up for you. The kundalini will help you with this. You just have to be confident about the help that it gives you. Uh, so let's just say you've got a pain in your in your uh, third chakra, and uh, and you you kind of sit there in meditation. You ask the Kundalini, Kundalini in me, show me what I need to see about this pain in my third chakra. And the picture that comes to you maybe is a is a is a child crying after having been the victim of a bully in the second grade. Okay, well evidently. Uh, you were either the child or you were the bully, and there's an area there that needs to be forgiven, that needs to be touched, that needs to be uh, uh, massaged in a way that allows a person's sense of self and s personal strength to come forward instead of having been stepped on so severely uh, at that age and, and by whatever vector of stepping on that occurred. Either the person was doing the stepping or was receiving the step. So it's that type of a thing, that type of a scenario. You may not get a visual. You may just get a feeling. It's like, oh, okay, oh, God, this had something. Oh, my gosh, there's that memory from second grade when when those guys ganged up on me and then beat me up, and oh, my gosh. You know, so, you know, that would that could form a third chakra imbalance in a person or a blockage. And so one, once again, you'd go into that, and as an adult now, you can look into that, and you can begin to forgive each of those kids uh, for, the, for the damage that they did to you at that time. And, and you forgive yourself for whatever, whatever thing that you may have done to, to, to get them angry at you. And it doesn't, I mean, it's not a guarantee that you did anything. There's no guarantee that you did anything. It's just there's always two. There's always two. It could have been a karmic thing for you as well. And so, you know, with that in mind, you just kind of look into it and, and begin to, to make those balances. Uh, so that's that's one area of a blockage that, that can that that you can work at to to begin to unblock. Another area would be the heart. Heart chakra. Let's go into heartbreak. Heartbreak and, and grieving uh, are very similar. Uh, both of them deal with the loss, with the feelings of, of, a, of a loss experienced within the emotional body. 
And, you know, there's a lot of forgiving to do. If it's a relationship type of issue, well, there's a lot of forgiving to do and a lot of, of patience to be had. The You know, the these blockages and the, these wounds to the heart do not heal overnight. And they're not typically amenable to to drug therapies either. You have to remember that a kundalini blockage of this sort is the kundalini bringing this to your attention. It's like, oh, Mr. Chris, I'm here. Yes, yes, I see. You know, you have this pain in the heart because, uh, you know, your heart was broken in such and such a way and you, you held a grudge or you wanted to get revenge or you wanted to lash out some of ego-oriented way and uh and so the the result of that is is this this pain in your heart and so we've outlined this for you the, the kundalini is telling the christian person you you know you you had this outline for you and and uh now you need to begin to do your forgiveness or or to follow the safeties now i don't know of other systems that will say uh use tolerance use patience use trust use surrender you know, use forgiveness in order to to bring a resolution to a blockage. Uh, but I haven't, you know, I haven't looked at all the systems out there. I'm sure there are some systems out there that will talk about it in those ways. Uh, but I am more sure that the safeties do talk about it in those ways. And so that's the system that I will espouse to you, not to say it's a panacea for everyone. I was accused of that today, so I want to... I want to make sure that uh, everybody understands that safeties will work for most people, um, but not for everyone. Not for everyone. And, and if you don't have the, the the tools of compassion and the tools of forgiveness and the tools of love, uh, then you're going to have a hard time uh, looking at your at your process honestly. And if you have a hard time seeing yourself honestly, then you're going to have a hard time finding any any kind of a of a of an issue with yourself inside of a blockage that may include something that you have done to another person. Okay. So there's levels of honesty that really, really, really need to be recognized and worked with. Getting back to the joys, you know, flipping over to the other side of the coin. The joys will serve just the same way that, say, a blissful or ecstatic experience will serve as a as an engine to drive the person to begin to work on their blockages, i.e., work on their pain, uh, the joy also offers you some sunshine in the fact that when you do relieve a certain pressure in a blockage, you'll feel it. You will feel it as a as a as a wow. How do I? Say? Looking for words here as a as a Infusion. feeling of joy. Uh, what's that? I'm sorry. Sorry, Chris. I'm saying like a huge infusion. Right, right. A, a huge yeah, infusion. That just, you know. that just, yeah, yeah sorry. exactly. Sorry, absolutely. Now, hey, Centaur, you spelled some of these things. Uh, why, why don't you? Why don't you? You know, tell tell people kind of your experiences in this area. Oh, okay. Well, just on what you're saying there, I was thinking, I very much recognize that as a blockage clears, um, this in, this joy also rises, that um, it, it is an infusion that just fills the whole body, and it is, it, there's no words on it. I mean, you can put words in it like love, or happiness, or, um, oh, mm, there's just no words. Uh, because they don't, it's not that defined. But it is something that is, see, I can't find the word. <laughs> well. It is something that, that in your day, you know, I, I don't know, the words are gone, I'm sorry. No, no, They're no, gone. Right. <laughs> well, welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> the... <laughs> The, the words yeah. with Kundalini, sometimes, I mean, for those of you in the audience who are hearing this and you have Kundalini, you totally get what's happening to us with words because so much of Kundalini is beyond the 
the the human ability to express through words. Uh, so so uh, you know Amelia and I will sometimes struggle with this, but yeah. So you'll you know you'll get this this feeling of of doing the right thing, of forgiving the right person, or or making the right kind of a movement towards balancing the issues that are causing the blockage in the first place. So, so uh, let's say you uh, let's say you la- you lashed out at somebody, and and uh, and uh, if somebody say it's a family member or a close friend or a loved one, you lashed out at somebody and, and, and you really hurt them. You really hurt them with that communication, and so uh, this can develop a, a blockage in the heart and in the throat. And uh, so you're going to get pain in these two areas, and you know depending on the severity of of the uh, of the infraction. And so now you can sit there and you can go, okay, oh gosh, you know, I forgive myself for. <coughs> For doing that to 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 her and and uh, gosh what a what an idiot I was to do that and 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 you'll feel you'll feel the, the you know the, the pain begin to 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 rearrange itself within you but you won't feel it go away you won't feel it go away until you go up to that person and say hey look I was way out of line when I said that to you and I am so 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 very sorry. And is, is there anything I can do to to help you or to or to shift your awareness uh, to the fact that that I'm very uh, I'm very sorry for what I said to you? Then, then you'll feel a major shifting in the level of pain in the blockage in the throat and in the heart. So you can kind of get an idea. It reminds me a little bit of these stel- these twelve step programs, you know, where you got to go back and. Say you're sorry to the people that you that you've hurt. Um, with Kundalini, yes, Kundalini will respond positively to a person doing that, so that that becomes a positive vector of blockage removal. Now, let's talk about embedded entities forming a blockage. This is this is a little more difficult because the entities don't care if you forgive them; they kind of laugh at you. When they say, "Oh, I forgive you," and she says, "I fine, forgive us, great, great, great," you know, and they'll they'll have another beer or something inside your body. So with that, it's a different type of scenario, and with that, um, you are being challenged by the Kundalini to to find the vector or the approach within your energetic anatomy that has allowed those entities to create a a home in you, so to speak. Uh, this can cause a pain that that is physical and yet not physical at the same time. And so there are various things. I mean, you know, I, I've <laughs> been doing this for a while and you know, people look on the web and say, "Oh, put uh, put uh, oil of camphor on your on the top of your head." Can you imagine? You know, your 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 husband or your wife comes to bed <laughs> with oil of camphor on her head, and it's like, "Honey, what are you doing?" Oh, well, um, the entities. <laughs> another another person says, "You know, put snow on top of your head." Go outside and get really cold and put snow on top of your head. Uh, another, you know, so there's these various treatments. You know, use sage. Let the sage smudge and inhale the inhale the smoke. And there's another. You know, there are many, many, many ways that people try to devise in order to get rid of entities. And with entities, uh, there are some things that you can do that are helpful. Uh, the first thing is to not talk with them. Do not converse with them. Do not recognize that they have taken up an infestation within you. Just don't do it. Just don't go there. And the and the, the more attention that you take away from what they're doing there, the less interest they have in being there. Don't buy into the idea that, oh my gosh, they're eating all of your kundalini. No. <laughs> they're not eating your kundalini. Uh, they might swim in it. You know, they might like to, to course through the energy. But your Kundalini is, is of a divine quality, and entities are not of a divine quality. They're of a spiritual quality, and there's a big, big difference between the divine and between spiritual. 
5K. There's a huge uh, level of, I mean, it's the whole top end. The whole, the whole uh, lower, mid, and top end of the astral plane, you know, that a person has to get through before they can come to the divine. Kundalini is a divine quality, and so the entities themselves are just like moths to a light, and they're in your system as moths to a light trying to soak up uh, divine energy when, in fact, you know, it's just not going to help them that much because they they have to be able to come into a human body and go through this themselves, some of them. Uh, others are just there to to challenge your belief system, to challenge your reality, to challenge your ability to to discern that, oh, okay, I am more than my five senses, and oh my gosh, you know, what does that mean to me, you know, as I, as I go throughout my life? And so having an entity infestation can do that. And so it serves a positive, uh, albeit painful, but positive function within your Kundalini awakening uh, equation. With entities, there are many, many different ways. If they're evil little entities, then if you do really, really kind things all the time, not for them, but for other people, if you become this really, really, really loving person, well, then you force them to evolve that way. And if they're not predisposed to evolve that way, they will just, they will have to leave because you've soured the milk. They have failed in, 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 in goading you into thinking that you're this egotistically powerful you know, magician, you can do this, you can do that, you can just, ah, you're so powerful, you're Thor, incarnate, right? Uh, you know, and, and if a person doesn't buy into that, just, you know, is is there balanced, stable, um, uh, non-egotistic type of person out there doing good and loving things for other people? Well, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of their being there, and they will leave, Um in, in many in many people, entity embedded entities are just part of the deal. You can have Grandma Esther, who, when she died, she she was she was afraid and and she didn't know what to do. And she just jumped into the nearest human body that was there, and she's just kind of taking up residence in your in your calf or somewhere, and she's just kind of riding it out. Uh, trying to figure out what has happened to her, uh, you know, people people's spirits do that sometimes. You know, they don't get the tunnel of white light or you know whatever. You you don't get that, and so they struggle and, and they are afraid, and so they they kind of jump into say a granddaughter or somebody who happens to be there at the funeral or wherever hospital. And so these types of entities, they're not really hurting you. Uh, they're just kind of there, they're almost like in a, in a parasitical sort of way, but not really, because they're not getting anything. They're just kind of getting a temporary home while they try to figure out what it is they need to do. And as you practice your kundalini practice well, the kundalini itself can begin to redirect uh, them in, in, you know, to go into the rest of their journey without as much fear. You have to remember that kundalini is intelligent. It is not... Uh, it, it's not like a internal combustion engine. It's not something that you can tune. You know, you're not sitting there with a screwdriver. Okay, I'm gonna tune my third chakra, and let's see, I'll get those revolutions in line with the first chakra and the fourth chakra. Oh, good, good, good. All cylinders. There we go. It's not working that way. It's smart. It doesn't need you and your ego to tune it. Uh, it is the teacher, and it will begin to give you instructions, and you will do best to, to learn to discern those instructions that the Kundalini is giving to you. Okay. Uh, at this point, um, I would like to give you a call-in number. And the guest call-in number is 347-934-0000. So that's... Uh, Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And if you have a question about your Kundalini awakening experience, feel free uh, to ask that question. Uh, getting back into the joy, uh, the more joy you feel, uh, the less of a negative entity interaction you will have. 
the more joy that you choose to feel, the more joy and love that you open yourself to by way of, of selfless acts of love for others in your life. So as you as you express yourself throughout your life and, and you help that person across the street or you buy groceries for that other person or buy somebody lunch or just smile at them as you pass them on the sidewalk, uh, these, these things count. These things count. And, and if you're able to do that consistently, so much the better. Now, as we dive back into some of the painful areas, uh, fear, fear can cause extreme levels of anxiety. Uh, fear plus anxiety can equal physical pain. If you're having <clears throat> kundalini in your life, say, where you're just like a few months into the process, you don't know what it is. Uh, you you kind of have an idea, but you really don't know. You know, you're kind of exploring around the web, okay, my symptoms match this, 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 and that. You know, and, and you finally kind of land on kundalini, there are certain things that I'm going to suggest that you do. And the first thing is to stop drinking caffeine. Stop drinking caffeine. As you do that, now you got to remember, caffeine has a 36-hour half-life in the human body. So you stop drinking that caffeine for the day. Well, you can have another day where the effects of that caffeine will still be prevalent within you, even if it doesn't feel like it. Okay. So as you stop drinking the caffeine, you take down the levels of, of hyper-expressive adrenaline in your bloodstream. So your adrenals, you know, are not, are not being stimulated because you've stopped the caffeine, so they're not being stimulated so much to push adrenaline into the bloodstream, and therefore you have less of a fight or flee response to have to deal with. As you do that, your levels of fear can begin to drop. And I say can begin because typically once we've felt a level of fear, it's hard for the ego to let go of that fear. Ego does not want to let go of the fear. Ego wants to hang on to that fear and and try to solve that problem or try to try to to you know which way do I run? Uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to take? How do I get rid of the fear here? Uh, and so, as you stop drinking the caffeine, it begins to uh, de-stress the system in a in a very real way, uh, in a very physical but and, and, and psychological and yet energetic way as well. So make sure that you're able to do that. Now, the next step is to take out those processed sugars, high fructose corn syrup, number one. Uh, take that out of your system. Start reading the label on the foods that you're eating. Take out any of the GMO foods because GMO foods, they don't really, they haven't tested them. They don't really know what kind of an effect it has on the body. They just know it doesn't kill you right off. Okay. And so because it doesn't kill you right off, well, then, oh, well, I guess it's safe. So um, try to begin to eat as nutritionally uh, um, natural as you can. And by that I mean organic. And even though, you know, the Fed took over the organic standards, you know, kind of wrecked them to some degree. If you can find uh, California uh, Organic Food Act of 1990 or the Oregon TILTH, uh, T-I-L-T-H, uh, um, qualifications of organic food, well, those are the probably the best ones you're going to find unless you grow it yourself. As you take this nutrition in, this also begins to to de-stress the system. You'll feel a little bit of stress at first as the body begins to adjust to actual natural food that, that it, it should be getting. Uh, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you're the, the, the stress from the Twinkies, you know, to, to, uh, to quinoa or spelt, you know, can be somewhat dramatic. Uh, <laughs> unless you can put some cream on the spelt. I don't know. But, there is a there is a level of adjustment that will have to be experienced uh, as you as you clean up your diet and as you clean up your diet and you begin to look at your life in a way that is that is healthier than you have been. Once again, you've taken up a 
another notch of stress off the system. As you take off these notches of stress off the system, you begin to lower the pain from the many blockages that that have been feeding that pain. Okay, so, you know, it's very important for you to begin to rearrange and readjust the way you live your life. Okay, so let's talk about some trauma here. Say you're going skiing and you, like me, you're not a very good skier, and, but, you know, you're you're kind of like trying to get down the hill without falling too many times. And, oh, my gosh, you, you know, all of a sudden this mogul comes up and you launch yourself off the mogul and, oh, my God, there's a tree. And you hit the tree and, oh, my gosh, and the next thing you know, uh, they're hauling you away on those little sleds that they kind of pull you into and they're taking you to the ambulance and you've got a lower spinal fracture and, oh, my God, it hurts. And it's and it's opened that kundalini channel up, too, and, you're having visions, you're having heat, you're having cold, you're having all of that stuff going all the way all over the place. And, and oh, my God, what do you do? And the first thing you do is you begin to talk to the Kundalini, you begin to talk to the divine self, and you begin to ask for its intercession. And it will intercess for you, uh, provided your karma supports this. You do not want to add more energy to this equation, i.e., uh, you don't want to start doing hallucinogens or you don't want to start uh, going after Shakti pots. You don't want to start doing those things. You want to just let the energy be as it is for the moment. Let the body heal, number one. Let the body heal. And don't do anything energetically stimulative for a while. Praying is about as far as you want to go with it. Uh, now, unless it's part of your physical therapy, uh, you know, such as yoga or something like that, um, that's fine. That's fine. Even the five Tibetans, if that's part of a physical therapy process, fine. Fine. But you want to just really do your best to back off. You know, don't do pranayama. Don't do anything that's going to bring too much energy into the system because, you know, first of all, the physical body has to heal, but also the the energetic envelope has to also heal. When you've ruptured into the Kundalini in such a such a, a harsh way, uh, it's a very very delicate process. You will see the visions, and you will see many. You'll have many of the symptoms of Kundalini, but you just need to to take it slow. You'll want to take it slow anyway. I mean, typically, you know, you're kind of going, "Oh my God, what's happened to my reality?" Okay, you're not nuts. You're not nuts. Often people that have a fractured tailbone or fractured lower spinal areas, um, yeah, yeah, the kundalini come up, and that was part of the karma. It's no accident that you're having kundalini coming up because of that trauma. That was part of the karma. So there's no one to blame, really. Okay, so that's that's another very important point. We don't need to look for who to blame. You had to get up at a certain time, to get in the car at a certain time, to get on over to the, to the to the ski mountain at a certain time, to get on that one lift that took you up to that one point at that certain time so that you could dodge all those other people going down the slopes at that certain time, hit that mobile, and right into that tree. So it was planned pretty well for you to have that occur. Okay, so just just consider that. Consider that. That goes with... Car accidents, tree limbs falling on a car. I mean, you know, you can extrapolate this out into our society and the many so-called accidents that we have that uh, through that accident uh, have us have an activation effect on the kundalini. <clears throat> okay. Um, do you have anything to add to this conversation at this point, uh, Santara? Um. I suppose sometimes, and um, just to get back to the bliss and the joy, um, I suppose in my experience, sometimes the bliss and joy can be so extreme or strong that it's difficult enough to live the life. It's challenging, I'd say. You know, we we always think of it in terms of it being, you know, the thing that's, you know, wonderful and easy to have. But sometimes, you know, it brings its own challenges. Um, because living in the ordinary everyday tasks 
if it's something that I would have found I had to make a choice. I, 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 sometimes I didn't want to be doing that. Let's put it like that. I wanted to remain in this, oh, this beautiful place, you know. Um, and so it would. It, so, so that brings other areas um, that need that need um, work on as well, you know. So I just think that's an oh, interesting uh, to mention. Yeah. yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, the other, the other, the other end of that is also the whole devotional aspect. Um, sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes you can be so devotional that the extreme nature of your devotion can provide too much energy, and the Kundalini will force you to stop. Uh, sometimes that force, not all the time, but sometimes that force is like having hot knives uh, pushed into the top of your skull. And it's not because the kundalini is pushing these hot knives in. It's the energy that you're creating through the severity of your devotion that provides that level of of, of sensation to occur. Uh, And so sometimes uh, you won't be allowed to meditate. Sometimes you won't be allowed to pray. and these are actually, you know, it's a compliment, really, in, you know, in a way, because what you're, what you're, what you're experiencing is that, yeah, you've done very well with your devotion, so you can, you can back off on that now. You can back off on that, or you've done very well with your meditation now. Now it's time for you to do other things like grounding, like selfless service for other people, like, you know, you know, doing some, uh, you know, some of the other aspects of the safeties. Uh, with regards to blockage removal, please note that the tongue up behind the upper front teeth, uh, the, the fingers in the Gyan Mudra, which is the thumb tip to the four fingertip and the other fingers spread out, uh, even to the point of saying the uh, Om Namaha Shivaya Om that has a nice balancing effect for people that are having blockages. Uh, eyes up position, um, chin down position when you're meditating, uh, staying well hydrated, Finding watermelon or or some sort watermelon if it's in season for you is really really good. Have it in the morning every morning, uh, but also uh, electrolyte uh, electrolyte maintenance. So if you can find some of that smart water, I believe has electrolyte uh, replenishing qualities. I know Gatorade does. That's why the football players you'll see them down there. I think they they throw it at each other. I think, um, but but they drink the Gatorade. Uh, so, so keep your elect- electrolytes balanced as well, and this also has the ability to bring some ease to some of the painful blockages that occur. Now, uh, if you start to have kriyas, kriyas are the spontaneous movements that occur uh, from a kundalini uh, activation. Uh, sometimes this is after the spinal sweep, sometimes it's before. It depends on the individual karma of the person. Uh, if you resist the Kriya. Say the Kriya wants you to to raise your knee and, and uh, hold it in the air, uh, by, you know, wiggling it to left and right. And you say, you kind of say to yourself, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to raise my knee and move it left and right. That's silly. Then you'll feel pain. You'll feel pain. And you'll feel pain to the degree that you need to feel it so that you raise your knee and you move it side to side. This is a constant uh, within most people that are having kriyas. Uh, If you resist the kriya, you will have pain. So for those of you that may be having kriyas, and kriyas aren't just huge body movements. Uh, Sometimes they're just like shaking or a or a, a vibrating or a restless, restless leg movements, things of that nature. Uh, if you resist these things within your kundalini experience, uh, you may bring on a painful situation without even knowing it. So really do your best not to resist anything that the kundalini is bringing you. Uh, allow it to occur. If you can't have it occur, say you have to have your, you know, you're doing your job and Maybe you can't lift your knee high in the air and have it move left to right, you know, while you're driving that forklift or, you know, doing whatever it 
at your banker's meeting, you know, it may not be appropriate. So you'll have to have a conversation with your kundalini. Kundalini in me, please allow me to have my kriyas at home and allow me to have my work uh, kriya free. And as long as you live up to your end of the bargain, kundalini will live up to its end of the bargain. Okay. So with regards to kriyas, even emotional kriyas, sometimes you may need to cry. And guys, I know, it can be hard to cry sometimes, especially if you're in mixed company. Um, Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Let yourself cry in the bathroom. Uh, There's no shame in it. Uh, Kundalini is in the emotional system, and the emotional system needs to be honored. So cry when it wants you to cry. Laugh when it wants you to laugh. Sometimes it'll just give you the giggles and, once again, you'll have to go to the bathroom and start laughing your head off because <laughs> it's it's part of the it's part of the Kundalini experience. It's part of the joy, the joy of it. Um, so really begin to understand that these are these are the signals of Kundalini infusion into the energetic anatomy. Don't let your ego get in the way. Do not let your ego get in the way. Do your best to go into the inner qualities of your of your humanity, of yourself, of your spirit. Do not look so much. This is this is me speaking. This is, you know, teacher Chris I'm speaking. Do not go outside of yourself. Do not look outside of your body or outside of your spirit. Everything that is happening to you right now is happening inside you. That's where you need to go. You go to the inner spaces, not the outer ones. Okay. No matter what you're told, no matter what you're told by by you know people on the internet or people who tell you that Kristen doesn't know anything, you just go to the inner spaces. Do your meditation. Do your prayer work. Trust the kundalini process within you. Really trust it because it is what is calling the shots. Not you, not your ego. But it gives you plenty, plenty of wiggle room there. It allows you to feel. Sometimes it allows you to feel like you're in control. Okay, And if, and it, and if, if your feeling that you're in control is beneficial to its infusion of your body, then it will allow that to occur. Just try not to get your ego so so in, entranced with the idea that uh, that uh, it's in control because it isn't. It isn't. Kundalini is in control. Uh, Kundalini is the hand of the divine, and the hand of the divine is inside your spine right now. And it's it's kind of like playing your human body as a as a as a beautiful musical instrument. And sometimes we need to tune those musical instruments in order for them to to play the kind of music, the beautiful, divine, transformative music that the Kundalini wants to play with your body. And so it will twist you here, it will twist you there. You know, there may be some pain here, there may be some pain there. But the pain does not last. Typically, it's, you know, just the first part of the system. You know, you may have some pain. And I mean may have some pain. Not everybody is the same. This is not cookie-cutter kundalini activations. Everybody comes to the table with different karma. So everybody comes to the the table with different expressions of kundalini awakening upon them. Some people never have a kriya. Some people never see the entities. They have no concept of what it is you're talking about except what you've told them. Okay? Okay. So it's no guarantee that you're going to get any of these things that I'm mentioning, but there's no guarantee you won't, so I do have to mention them. Okay, so you may you may begin to get some headaches. Some of these headaches are because there's so much energy collecting uh, in the sixth chakra and the crown area. You know, you're feeling the uh, the uh, the golden helmet. Now, the golden helmet is basically a feeling like you're wearing a bowl on your head and the the uh the bowl runs the parameter of your hairline. Even if you are bald now, but the, the, the hairline that 
that was there before you got bald is still there. And so those follicles are feeling the energetics uh, of the Kundalini on it. So you're you're feeling the golden helmet, you're feeling this pressure here, and just just begin to breathe and relax and allow that to occur. You know what it is. You know what it is. The mystery is out of it. Therefore, the fear doesn't have to come into it. Okay. As you take the fear out of the equation, you begin to de-stress the situation. Um, but sometimes, sometimes the energy itself will will stress uh, those those muscles uh, in the head, and and you can have a headache sometimes. And so, you know, if, if paracetamol or or aspirin or something like that helps you, then I'm okay with with people doing that. I'm typically not a drug oriented person, uh, but but I'm okay with it if. Uh, if you're going into a situation, the dentist or, or or something where you know that direct infliction or trauma is going to be done to your body, uh, even and the Kundalini knows it, the Kundalini is supporting it, the Kundalini will also support uh, your use of drugs or not. Sometimes it will say no. Sometimes you can't wear that cast. Sometimes you can't take that pain medication for those cavities that have been filled or whatever it is, right? Kundalini gets the final say. Or your teacher. If you have a teacher that that uh, that is keeping track of your process, then the teacher can have a final say too, uh, depending on the Kundalini. Kundalini is the big, is the big kahuna. <laughs> so you need to pay attention to that. Um, but if you're going to the dentist or you're having oral surgery, whatever it is, uh, Kundalini is not always going to frown on painkillers. It's just, it's, you know, I've had Kundalini for 23 years now, and I have made every mistake, quote unquote, some you know mistake in the book. But but uh, the Kundalini is very forgiving. It understands the world that we're living in. It understands the pressures that we're working with, and uh, it, and it's okay with you taking care of yourself as best you can. It understands this is not a perfect world. There exist levels of pain here that can be ameliorated through uh, pain painkillers, as long as they're not selected serotonin reuptake inhibitor painkillers. Okay? Those are the ones that you kind of want to stay away from. Uh, alcohol is another one that you don't want to use so much. Um uh, you know, but but some of the uh, the, the the poppy type of uh, painkillers uh, they're okay. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of some of them right now, but yeah, you, you, I think most of you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, so don't stress out. You know, if, if the if, if the dentist is saying, okay, I want you to take this Vicodin here and and do this or that. Don't think that, oh, the Kundalini's going to hate me. Now, if the Kundalini gives you that indication that, oh, no, 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 don't you take that. Well, then don't take it. Don't take it. This is why, you know, this is another reason why I, I, I like to stress that you learn to discern the communication of, of the uh, Kundalini to you. You learn to discern it. Now, we've got uh, 21 minutes left, I think. And uh, here's the call-in number if anybody would like to call in. It's Area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Okay. So let's go back into the doy range here. As you practice, as you have a kundalini practice, and I strongly suggest that you get a kundalini practice, what that will give you is the ability to to chart your progress. And this gives a level of security within within your uh, limited understanding. Uh, this gives a level of security that, okay, I'm working this process. Um, I have a teacher. I'm working this process. Okay, I'm good with this. I no longer need to be afraid of this process. And this gives you a level of security, and this security will be amplified by the Kundalini. Kundalini will amplify the positives as much as it amplifies, or actually more, more than it amplifies the negatives. Kundalini is a beautiful, wonderful, tactile, joyful experience.
experience. For the rest of your life, there is no end point with Kundalini. I know, I know, I know. Some people did Kundalini last summer, and wow, it was great, and now they're on to bigger and better things. But to me, whatever they had, I don't know what they had, but it wasn't Kundalini. Okay. Uh, Kundalini is this amazingly beautiful experience that just doesn't quit. At first, yes, we have some some blockages that we need to get through, and the pain will attest to where your blockages are. Okay. It's okay. It's natural. Nothing is wrong. If you practice the safeties, if you go to the www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com, that's the number one, dot com, and you go to the left-hand menu and you uh, look at the safeties, you click on the safeties, and you read them or you copy them out, it will really, really help your process. As I said earlier, it is not a panacea for everybody. Okay, not everybody's going to receive it. But not everybody has the qualities that you need in order to receive it, too. I mean, like, as I mentioned earlier, there's levels of self, uh, the self-honesty self uh, that need to occur. I mean, did I really forgive that person? Was I really tolerant of that person? Okay, these, these are levels of, of, of personal honesty that only you can really... Uh, discern how it is for you and validate for yourself how it is, okay? Uh, do yourself a favor and take out the stress in your life. The chemical stress through foods, the emotional stress through uh, uh, relationships and perceived hurts and perceived uh, um, problems with other people, Take out of your life the stress of uh, the mental stress of trying to figure this out. You won't figure Kundalini out. It will figure you out before you figure it out, long before you figure it. You'll never figure it out. I mean, nobody gets to figure out God while they're in a body, and I'm, not, and I'm pretty sure even out of the body you don't get to do that yet either. That is a quality that is earned and not just given. Um, and, and so take these levels of stress out of your body. Meditate at least 21 minutes a day. Meditate at least 21 minutes a day. Uh, do that. Do that. Do just that. If you can't do anything else, do just that, and that will help you tremendously. If you can pray, if you're if you're a person who can pray. And meditate 21 minutes a day and then pray 21 minutes a day. But make sure when you do your prayers that you're not asking for something. Give gratitude in your prayer. Give devotion in your prayer. These two things also have ways of, of bringing balance into the painful and bringing more joy into the joyful. This, this is, you know, this is a conversation uh, about a quality of Kundalini that that I could spend the next the rest of my life talking about. There's so many areas here, and, and so it's it's very difficult for me to squeeze everything into 90 minutes. Um, but I'm just I'm, I'm doing my best to hit some of the high points with this, um, uh, with regards to your practice. Make sure that you do your practice, but don't try to do a practice with a with uh, with the goal of having a spinal sweep or things like that. Do the practice as an honoring of your kundalini. And if you go to that same website, the www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com, there's another as you as you look at the safeties and you scroll all the way down the safeties, you'll see what's called the practice. And the practice is, you know, that will show you what you can do on a daily basis. That will show you. Um, if you can find a Kundalini teacher that you like, that you trust, a living teacher. I know, I know, I know. Most of the, of the great teachers, well, they're dead. They're dead teachers. And they can't really kind of like help you as much as you might like to be helped or may need to be helped. Um on a day-to-day -day level. This is where a living teacher can come in and, and assist you in these areas. So 
see if you can find a living teacher that you're that you're comfortable with, and you can talk to that teacher about your pains. Um, this is something else. Uh, uh, you can see a lot of uh, a lot of these uh, topics brought up in the uh, on the YouTube video channel. So please, once again, go to Chrisum the number zero. Kundalini uh, in uh, in YouTube. There's, gosh, there's 224 videos. Check them out. See what you think. Um, see how it helps you. I'm not I'm not trying to be everybody's answer to Kundalini situations. It seems that I I can do a lot with you know by only only by virtue of the Kundalini am I able to do any of this. Um, I, I'm, you know, the the videos are, are free. This this broadcast is free. Take it as you like or discard it as you like. I mean, it's not anything. I'm not laying down the law here. Okay, I'm giving it to you as I am as I am compelled through my Kundalini to give it to you, and. You know, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, fine, fine, fine. Um, I am, I am, I am loved on the internet. I am loved on the internet, and I am reviled on the internet. Okay, some people like me, some people hate me, and I think that's probably a, a pretty good balance to have. Believe it or not, I mean, you know, if 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 you're around people that that uh, that everybody likes, then you know maybe you're not getting maybe you're not getting the full spectrum of the Kundalini experience. Um, there has to be levels of goodness and levels of not so goodness in order to make a, a dualistic uh, situation uh, non dualized. Okay, you have to be able to have the Tao. Okay, the Tao is the one that is two and the two that is one. And so, you know, recognize that in your teacher and and, uh, and, and see see where they stand up for you. Uh, these, feel free to share these broadcasts too. I would like you to share these broadcasts with as many people as you want. Um, it's just the information that needs to come out. And I remember when I was new and fresh in my process, I would have, given everything I could to, to get some of this information and I have a feeling that this is this is happening out there for you right now. So take this information, use this information. It's given to you freely. You know, with, with the blessings of Centara and, and Eileen Laurel, who does a lot of help uh with, with the Community Awakening Systems One program. Um really, really reach in and and comfort yourself. There's no need to be afraid. There's no need to have constant levels of pain. You may have pain at the beginning, but it's transient pain. Now, if you don't cause it to get worse by drinking a lot of alcohol or taking hallucinogens or trying to cover it up with drugs or trying to cover it up with bad behavior, um, you know, one one level of bad behavior would be uh, you know, the kundalini gives you this huge libido increase, and then you go out and you, like, partake of pornography. Well, this is not this is not the reason why the kundalini is increasing the libido, so that you can go out and have a greater pornographic experience. Okay, so this that's just an idea that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, kundalini is the living force of God upon the tissue of the flesh of humanity. Okay. The, the, the flesh made divine. Sometimes when the flesh is made divine, uh, just like when the when the two year old starts to get their teeth coming in, you're going to have teething pain. Sometimes with the Kundalini, you're going to have teething pain, but you also have teething joy. The joy, uh, the knowledge that you're. You're getting your divine teeth in. Oh, my gosh, what a great thing. What a beautiful thing. Okay, so understand that. Take it. Take this information as you see fit. 
you know, I don't want you to think that, uh, that uh, you know, I'm so wrapped up into the whole Master Christian thing that uh, that it affects uh, the the level of ego that I, you know, look after. Because I I don't I don't really you know this is this isn't really coming from the personality of, of, of Christian at all. This is this stream of consciousness comes from the Kundalini, and that is what matters the most. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Santara. You still there? Are you awake? I'm sit. I'm <laughs> I'm awake. Indeed, I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Would you like to make that announcement again? Yeah, that would be great. Just very briefly to let you know that the retreat is happening on April the 20th, April the 21st in Santa Rosa, California. And if you want more information on that, you can write to kundalinimatters at gmail.com or you could give Eileen Loro a buzz on 239-246-5608 and we'll answer any questions that you may have on the retreat. So thank right. you, Chris, for you. that. Excellent show. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Centauri. And hey, everybody, uh, go out, have your kundalini, be joyful in your expression. If you have pain, know that it's trans it's transit. It's not going to last. You can you can uh, use the safeties. Use any of this information that that's being given. And I know if you need to charge, if you if you're the kind of person that if you don't pay a lot for it, then it's not going to work for you. Feel free to send Centara all the money that you want. <laughs> send her a thousand million dollars if you want. If that's what it takes for you to to uh, to to be able to accept information, then send it to her. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye.